This video is brought to you by these YouTube members. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Hello everyone and welcome to the top 10 healers on Bleach Brave Souls. Now it's been quite some time since we've actually had a healer, and it's been even more time since I've actually made this list, so I figured why not. Now before I begin, the placements on this list won't be like they usually are. The overall usefulness of a character will be accounted for, but I'm just letting you know their usefulness as a support character will carry a lot more weight. So it's possible that a character with a higher number could be better than a character than a lower number, but the character in the lower number is better for support. At the end of the day, all these characters are great. So that said, let's begin. It's actually kind of crazy that a character as old as this Nemu can even be on this list, but here we are. At number 10, we have the swimsuit version of Nemu, the original one. Now, this version of Nemu was a decent healer before her resurrection. What resurrection ended up giving her was essentially a boost in stats, as well as frenzy and a strong attack damage link. Overall, she's not a bad character, and that's saying a lot considering she's about 4 years old at this point. The range on her strong attacks are definitely dated, but they are by no means bad. She even has a full screen strong attack 3. But I digress, this is a heal list after all, so let's talk about that. Her strong attack 2 is a heal move. She doesn't really have a strong attack recharge ability, so you are gonna have to wait the full 30 seconds seconds for that to come back, without any links of course. That said, this Nemu also has the ability to heal herself for 20% of her total health every time she enters a new area, allowing you to save your heals for when your party really needs it, or in case that 20% didn't cut it. Now there's one other lieutenant who can do this. The power version of Asane is also a healer, and she regains 25% of her total health anytime she enters a new area. The reason Nemu made it and she didn't though, is because Nemu is a significantly better fighter and less likely to need the healing. Jumping ahead a few years, we have the Spirit Society version of Ginichimaru. Now this Gin is a really, really good character. He can inflict debilitating burn on all of his attacks with the exception of his strong attack 2, and he has a strong attack recharge link, letting him spam his strong attacks 1 and 3, and regain his strong attack 2 a lot faster. Which is good, because it's a heal move. Now overall you want a healer to be durable, which, you know, meh. But you also want them to be able to heal a party as frequently as possible, which Gin can definitely do. And while he may not be as durable as some of the other characters on this list, he is ranged, meaning he can deal damage from the side and heal when he needs to. Now Gin is a strong attacking character with a high SP and frenzy, so you can expect him to deal some decent damage. Plus he can inflict that burn. His strong attacks 1 and 3 have great range, but his strong attack 2, not so much. It can deal damage, but you have to be up close. So it's not exactly worth it for damage sake. Still, he's a great healer and a great character, and a pretty solid character to take care of bosses with. <laughs> Next up, we have the Christmas version of Nanao, who, like Gin, is also a high SP, strong attack recharge character. Nanao can inflict debilitating weakening on all of her attacks, except for a strong attack 2, and in addition to the strong attack recharge link, she's also got Berserker at 20 and Frenzy, meaning she can deal hefty damage. Now, much like Gin, she is also squishy, meaning she's not very durable. That said, also like Gin, you can stack her strong attack recharge link, and she'll be able to use it a lot more frequently, so it balances out. Now, her strong attack 1 isn't as effective as Gin's for dealing damage, as it doesn't have that high of a multiplier, but it does hit a lot more times, and hers can inflict debilitating weakening, which is really useful for keeping your party or yourself alive. The now is also a ranged character whose normal attack hits twice, so her normal attacks are also decently likely to inflict debilitating weakening. Now, she does have the higher stats and the Berserker, but ultimately it was because of that weakening that I decided to put her over Gein. Even though for actual combat, I do prefer Gein. Next on the list, we have the Halloween version of Lilinette, who I honestly feel like gets forgotten. She's a really, really good character, and I hardly ever see anybody use her. She's got a really high attack as well as a plus 20 bruiser, flurry, and poise. Now this is great, because unlike everyone else on this list so far, Lilinette deals most of her damage with her normal attack. This means she can be consistently dealing damage, and not have to wait for strong attacks to come back. For strong attacking characters, this can be a bit of a problem, since they essentially have a strong attack too, which they can use, but because it's a heal move, it comes back slower. So it's best to wait to use it when it's needed, but it essentially gives them one less attack. 
Now Little Net doesn't really have to worry about that, since she can just continue to deal damage with a normal attack and only use that strong attack too when it's absolutely necessary. Now this doesn't mean that she doesn't get access to it as fast as some of the other characters, but you take the good with the bad. Now in addition to dealing heavy damage, she's also resistant to it, since she has a damage reduction soul trait of 16% that can be stacked up to 76%. To sum it up, she can deal heavy damage from a distance, barely takes any damage herself, and can heal it if she does. She's not as fast a healer as some of the others, but she is way more durable. Now this next one is going to be pretty quick, because if I'm being honest, him and a few others follow a very similar formula to Lilinette, only they do it slightly better. The Machine Society version of Izuru also has a really high attack, as well as Flurry. He does not have poise, which does kinda suck, but he is a ranged character, so assuming you're doing it correctly, you won't really need it. Izuru has a plus 30 bruiser. He also has a damage reduction soul trait, so he's also durable, but he is completely immune to being frozen. And in addition to that, all of his attacks, with the exception of his strong attack 2, have a chance to inflict debilitating paralysis. And while he may not be a high SP character, he's still a little more likely to inflict them with the strong attacks than most normal attacking characters, since they hit a decent amount of times and help keep enemies in line. Overall, he's a very hard-hitting character who also just happens to be a healer. <laughs> Next up, on a very, very similar note, is the Desert Society version of Ichigo. Now this character is very similar to Izuru. He also has a really high attack as well as flurry and no poise, but he has a plus 20 bruise. This Ichigo is also ranged, and he also has a damage reduction soul trait of 16%. The two also have a very similar strong attack 1, both of which are designed to keep enemies back and to inflict the status ailment, which is where the first of two big differences really comes in. And that's that Ichigo can inflict debilitating burn on every attack except for a strong attack 2. But it's that second big difference that that really puts Ichigo above Izuru, and that's that his normal attack hits twice, before Flurry, which is actually a pretty big deal, because Flurry doubles the amount of times your normal attack hits, essentially making it to where Ichigo's attack hits 4 times every time, meaning one of Ichigo's normal attack strings hits 16 times per enemy, rapidly increasing the combo and greatly increasing the chance of inflicting burn. Lilinette can actually also do this, except she doesn't inflict status elements, otherwise she'd be above both of them. With that said, Lilinette, Izuru, and Ichigo are very, very similar similar characters on this list. They all fulfill a similar role. They're ranged, they can take hits, and they can heal. And in the end, their placement really just came down to status elements. Now you can't really have a top 10 heal list without Yachiru Unahana, because she's just so good at it. Now like Ichigo, Izuru, and Lilinette, she is also a high attacking character with Flurry. Like them, she also has a damage reduction soul trait, but unlike them, she doesn't have the best killer, and she doesn't have bruiser. That said, there is a reason she ranked above them, and that reason is her special. Now a character with a high attack and Flurry is limited by the frequency of their healing. Since they don't have a strong attack recharge link, and building them in a strong attack recharge build would water down their potential. That is the case with this character as well, except she has another way to heal, and that's in her special. It may not deal that much damage because she doesn't have a high SP, but it is a way to instantly heal the entire party for 60% of the total health. Not to mention that while it doesn't deal that much damage, it does have a slight chance to instant kill the enemy, which some would argue is the most amount of damage you can deal. Now, honestly, outside of a heal list, I think I would actually put Ichigo, Lilinette, and Izuru ahead of her. But this is a heal list, and the fact that she's got an extra instant heal she can use is why I ended up placing her ahead of them on this list. 2対1で卑怯かもしれねえけど頼むぞ井上はい行け<笑> Coming in at number 3 is the manga version of Orihime. Now, unlike the last several characters on this list, Orihime is a strong attack recharge character, meaning she has a high SP and frenzy. She's also got Berserker at 20%, and she's got an ability called Healer. Now for those of you who don't know, because not many characters have Healer, it essentially increases the amount of stamina healed anytime a healing move is used by the character who has it. Now don't be fooled, while Healer's ability does say 30%, it's 30% of the health healed. And normally a character, like Orihime here, heals for 20% of a character's total health. So it's 30% of that 20%. To put it simply, if a character has healer, instead of healing 
percent of a character's total health, they heal slightly over 26%. That's basically what that means. It's a good ability to have, but the 30% is a little misleading. Still, it makes her a slightly better healer than most of the characters on this list, since she can heal them for more. And that strong attack too, in addition to being a heal move, is also a barrier move. Now the barrier move aspect does mean she has to wait a little longer for that strong attack to come back, but it does make her a lot more durable. Not to mention it gives another layer of support to this character in the form of a barrier for everyone else. So it's definitely worth it. To top it off, her special in addition to dealing a lot of damage also inflicts weakened defense, which is just another way this Orihime helps out. Now coming in at number 2 is Seinosuke. Now if I'm being completely honest, when it comes to specifically healing, Orihime is slightly better. They are very similar characters in that both their strong attack 2s are both a heal move and a barrier move, but Orihime has the healer ability and Seinosuke does not. Now yes, this is a top 10 healers list, and their ability to heal does weigh in heavier than anything else. That said, it's hard to overlook the fact that Seinosuke is a much better character. If he was only slightly better, I'd overlook it, but what he brings to the table in comparison is worth much more than a measly 6% more health. Now both characters have a high SP and Frenzy, they both have a strong attack 2 that's a heal move and a barrier move, and they both have a strong attack recharge link. But Seinosuke has both a plus 40 bruiser and a plus 40 berserker. On top of that he's also got Havoc so strong attacks reach a wider area and he's got guard break so all of his attacks deal the full amount of damage. The guard break also pairs really well with his normal attack. Even though he's a high SP character, he does have a plus 40 bruiser and his normal attacks are very fast, making them a viable option for damage. His strong attack 2 is also viable as a strong attack, because not only does it deal damage, but it's also a hybrid vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before pushing them back, something that's very useful for a healer, especially a ranged one, who needs to keep enemies away. All this to say, this guy's not just a great healer, but also a really good hybrid character. Also, insanely enough, he's the last healer we've gotten. Like there is other characters whose specials heal, or who are able to heal themselves via drain or some other ability, but when it comes to characters with strong attack 2 that are heal moves, he's the last one we've gotten, and we got him in May of 2020, well over a year ago. Now before I get to number 1, here are a few other viable healers. Yeah. So, it's time to wake up. Who is it? Now finally at number 1 we have Kirio. Now Kirio is on a whole other level. Now much like a large number of characters on this list, she also has a really high attack, as well as flurry. Kirio also has a plus 40 bruiser so she deals a lot of damage with a normal attack and she has poise, meaning her attacks cannot be interrupted. Now much like all the other high attackers on this list, she also has a damage reduction soul trait, making her very, very difficult to take out, especially when stacked, since she's a healer. Out of the high attacker, she's also the one that deals the most damage thanks to that plus 40 bruiser, but it doesn't stop there. Her strong attack too isn't just a heal move, it's also a boost move and she has enhancer, meaning that for 20 seconds after she uses it, her and everyone else on the team gets a boost of 30 33% to their attack, defense, and focus. Meaning that not only does she and everyone else deal more damage, but they're also resistant to it thanks to that increase in defense, which does make up for that additional time she has to wait to get that strong attack back. Kirio is also the only character in the game that isn't an Orihime that has the healer ability. 
meaning that her heal move doesn't just boost people but also heal them for an extra amount that most of the other characters on this list can't reach. Kirio is the kind of character who can do all of this from a distance before enemies get a chance to get to her, and if they somehow do and deal damage, it won't be a lot and she can just heal it anyway. Now both Seinosuke and Orihime can heal a little bit faster, thanks to the strong attack recharge ability, but Kirio is so much more durable and can deal so much more damage that I just had to put her at number one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for some more top 10 lists.